health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health TV and Radio Show. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you're notified every week with my new podcast on Mondays and Tuesdays. And if you haven't already, join my free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There is no downside. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health, and you'll be a part of an amazing like-minded group to support you on your journey in addition to truly taking control of your health. My goal is to reach everyone on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear my message of healing. So please help me with that goal. Share this podcast with a few of your friends who may need my help, and I am so excited about today. Dr. Todd is back. He was the first in his class at Northwestern University and was accepted after two years of college to the premier program at Johns Hopkins Medical School. He is no dummy. Um, We've had him on before. He's become a leader in the laser biophysics research. You probably have no idea what that means. And has developed a stem cell protocol that has reversed biological age at the DNA level more uh, more than any other method in medical history. And he has been granted multiple patents in stem cells, nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, and even agriculture. Welcome back, Dr. Todd. How are you today? I'm fantastic today. So good to be on with you again. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk about stem cell treatment for hair and skin. But first, I have to tell everybody uh, my experience. I have had two injections um, in internally, so not the hair or the skin yet. And I feel better. My energy's better. My skin's better. My hair's better. My muscle tone seems better. Um, my vision is better. So that is, that was the most, um, detrimental thing that I was dealing with was the fact that with stress or too much screen time, my eyes would go blurry and especially my left eye. And it was like behind the eye. It wasn't actually the, the vision. And it was the second pop that I got where it's been gone and it's been phenomenal. Um, I'm 48 years old. Don't wear eyeglasses. And uh, as you're getting older, if anyone's losing their vision, they know how important it is. It's almost like you'd, you'd, you'd give every anything to have your eyes back. Next thing is, is that my mom, 80 years old, never a weight problem, no health issues. She's just one of those people that can do and eat whatever she wants. She was riding her horse at 80 years old. Yes, she was doing that, but the horse took off with her and she fell off and she fractured her pelvis and her rib. And she walked into Dr. Todd's facility like an old woman. It was actually very frightening to me because I saw my mom acting very old and she's a very young 80. Um, And I had these flashes of what it would be like. And when she had this fall, I said, mom, are you ready to do everything I tell you to do? And she said, yes. And I said, we got to change your diet. We got to get you on some supplements and you need to go see Dr. Todd. And she said, yes, yes, and yes. And um, all of a sudden, she's becoming her young self again. She is recovering much faster than the doctors um, expected her to. And my mom's my mom's coming back, Doctor Todd. So it's it's fantastic to see, and I'm super excited about that. So I'm eternally grateful for you and all that you're doing. So before we get into the nitty gritty of all the stuff to make us look good. <laughs> Let's talk about why your process is so different than any other stem cell treatment. We went into this on our last episode, but just for those who didn't hear us, um, let's just give them a, 
a background on what your procedure is like and why it's different than the typical stem cell treatment. Sure. Happy to give the, the briefer encapsulation than the broader description of the whole stem cell world and just focus on what we do that's unique in that environment. There are many types of stem cells and the one we work on is very powerful and formed quite early in gestation. When a cell is capable of becoming anything in the stem cell world, it's called pluripotent. It means that it can make any of the hundreds of different types of cells depending upon the environment in which you place it. We use a type of cell with a long name, very small embryonic-like stem cell, and the abbreviation is VSEL. And some people are concerned about the phrase embryonic-like, and it's useful because they're just after the embryonic stage so they maintain some of the robustness, but they're past the point of being able to make a whole new person, which embryonic stem cells can do. But embryonic stem cells at that level have a risk of creating benign tumors. And once it goes past that, the pluripotent, that risk is gone. And we've had lots of experience with it. We've seen the risk of that. And all the science suggests that based upon the biology of those cells, that they don't have that risk. So fundamentally, they're the most powerful type of stem cell that can be used because they can literally make everything. The other thing that makes them incredibly useful, and we don't know why this happens, it just does, and it's very powerful. For unknown reasons, these cells literally go into hibernation around the time that we're born. And because they're metabolically asleep, they're not dividing. Because they're not dividing, their telomeres aren't shortening. And that means that biologically, no matter how old a person is, these cells stay incredibly young. As young as newborn, and we've shown that they're at least decades younger than the person is biologically. So it's almost like someone had saved their umbilical cord blood when they were born or their parents did. And instead of having to save the cord blood and put it in a very cold freezer for many years, for some reason, because these cells are dormant, they remain biologically very youthful and potent and they circulate at room at body temperature. And all we need to do is literally, as we did for you and your mom, start a single IV draw a number of tubes of blood, not that many really, compared to even just getting normal blood testing. And from the whole blood, we separate millions, uh, a usual treatment, we estimate 50 to 60 million of these very powerful stem cells. And the art of it is that we've invented a new type of laser that does two incredibly useful things. The first is that it's the most efficient way that's been developed so far to awaken these cells from their lifelong sleep. The second is that, and we have patents on this, even as we're infusing the cells, the same laser we use to awaken them goes much more deeply through tissue than ordinary laser. And we've seen at the test tube level that this laser signal literally sings the song of the stem cells in light and attracts them like the Pied Piper to go wherever we direct the laser. So we do a laser guidance protocol where based on that person's needs, we can increase the probability that these very powerful, very young stem cells go exactly where they're needed and amplify the regenerative benefit. What I love is like during my process, you know, my body might have said, oh, she's got inflammation in her um, adrenals or um, in my knee or whatever, but I wanted it to go to my eyes. So the laser we put the laser to direct it towards my vision and then of course brain. And for my mom, it was around her pelvis and then, you know, brain because we want to make sure she doesn't get Alzheimer's or dementia as well. But the, the fact that you were able to pick, what is it about seven areas of the body mm -hmm. to focus on? Yeah. And, and it's a really pleasant experience and, Dr. Todd and everyone in the office is amazing. And um, so just, just my own experience couldn't have been more easy, 
no stress, not the typical doctor appointment. Um, but what you mentioned cord blood, I pay $150 for my child's cord blood a year. Should I stop paying and, and throw it away now that this procedure is available? I would keep it. And the reason to keep it is that cord blood itself is a cocktail of many different types of stem cells. There's neural stem cells and pancreatic stem cells and skin stem cells and cardiac stem cells. In addition, it also has these very small embryonic-like stem cells, and I call them V-cells for short. That's how I learned about the V-cells, actually, was in a chapter on a whole big textbook on stem cells that focused on cord blood. It talked about these amazing characteristics. And you know that the cord blood, the V-cells, will literally be newborn. They could be incredibly powerful and useful. So it's a great, big, wonderful cocktail. It's definitely worth that amount of money per year to save it. The beauty is that even if someone hasn't done that, and most people haven't, that they can still get cord blood-like benefits, even though they haven't had the benefit of putting them away in a freezer. Okay. Well, there's so much other research going on about stem cells. Most people, and I can I can tell you, you know, my dad is a very Western medicine guy who doesn't really listen to anything I say, probably because I'm his daughter, where my mom is more open-minded and, and um, ready to, to do whatever. So his reaction to stem cells and the doctor's reaction to my mom saying, should I do stem cells was no, they won't help you. And my guess is that it's because they're thinking of the traditional route of what stem cells mean. So what are most people thinking is a stem cell procedure um, when they when they hear about that? That was part of the confusion that in our more detailed discussion we got into the last time, that the term stem cell is confusing because there's a whole hierarchy of stem cells. At the very tip of the hierarchy, you've got the actual embryonic stem cells. Beneath that, you have pluripotent. Beneath that, you have the different germline types of stem cells, and there's three germ lines, as you recall from biology, endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm, and then single tissue committed stem cells. So the challenge is that when you hear the word stem cells, it can be misleading to think it's just the same type of thing. There are many types of stem cells, and some become less potent as people get older. Some are too big to go through the lung if you give them IV. And then if they're not your own, then there's also the issues of tissue mismatches and potential reactions and even how long they would even stay in the body. So there has been great controversy because it really hasn't been a unified approach to studying stem cells. And until there's FDA approval and all that it takes to get that for particular indications, then it's going to be a bit of the Wild West. And there can be a lot of confusing information about thinking that a stem cell will be good for anything. And if you're really being scientific, you would need to know what type of stem cell, where it was derived from, how old the person is, the size of the cells, the intended method of delivery. And then you could say whether it would be a good fit for that person and whether there would be likely to be a benefit. And there's a challenge if stem cells are used in a way that it's not the right type of stem cell for the purpose, then it may not give the results. And that would be one reason if people have heard those stories that they might shy away. Right. Okay, so now let's get into the fun stuff. Because if you do it internally with the IV, right, you're getting this overall whole body and brain um, rejuvenation, anti-aging, and you can use the laser to direct it to the different areas of your body. Now, when you speak to most women, especially as they're aging, I would say men, men too, but women, especially in where I live in Southern California, 
there's a lot of fillers, there's Botox, there's hair pieces, there's extensions, hair and skin is everything. And over the last three years, I have noticed so many people, especially women saying, oh my gosh, I'm losing my hair. And they're not people that have ever had an issue with hair. And one of them is my mom. My mom has had a full head of hair all of her life. And um, after COVID, she said, Sarah, what's going on? I'm getting, I'm going bald. What do I do? Um, and so a lot of women are, are suffering from hair loss and skin, you know, skin rashes are occurring, but wrinkles, the mouth wrinkles, looking like you're a smoker when you're not a smoker. You want to lose weight and be thin, but then you lose the fat in your face and then you, you've got all the lines everywhere. So all these things are going on. And now as we're getting into this, everybody, as you're listening, nothing's going to replace a good diet. Nothing's going to replace supplements, exercise, and sleep. So I'm assuming that all of you are are taking care of those things before considering what we're talking about. But let's get into skin. So how are you using this process or these amazing little um, embryonic like stem cells for skin rejuvenation? Well, this is a very interesting area. And I'm going to share a piece of information that isn't widely known, but it's quite important because it is relevant to the hair too. Each type of tissue has its own type of stem cell and the skin is no exception. And the stem cells in the skin reside surprisingly in the hair follicles. So if there's damage to the skin and the body wants to regenerate it, it literally will have a whole regenerative process from the hair follicles out, which can also make hair grow again. And then there are also stem cells at the, or at least regenerative cells at the uh, base of the epidermis and not necessarily stem cells, but it's how it regenerates and giving young stem cells can make all those cells younger. So the beauty of using the V cells is that they can actually go into follicles that are old and may have lost their stem cells or have very few left and provide more stem cells, which may even be enough for the hair to grow again or even to grow and become darker again. So it can be thicker and darker and more robust and make people really happy. <laughs> and then as far as the skin goes, these very young stem cells can make the, the base a layer of the skin more young and robust, even that can grow younger and thicker. And then you have the uh, layer that would be called the dermal layer, and that has the cells that make, and those are called fibroblasts. And fibroblasts were out over time, and these stem cells can actually regenerate new collagen producing fibroblasts and generate more new collagen as well. So, we use a lot of the methods that are popular to make the skin look younger. And these methods do work. It just works better when you add stem cells. So for example, there's a popular technique called the vampire facelift. And the regenerative factors come from a person's blood and platelets. That would be a micro needle, which creates little holes in the skin. So the growth factors can get in and it does work better with microneedling and microneedling itself will produce collagen to make the skin thicker and help reduce lines. Then beyond that, lines themselves can be injected to have a more powerful effect at reducing or even making them disappear. And what we've seen is compared to the typical vampire facelift, where usually it would require doing a number of treatments every month, you know, often for six months, to see a significant benefit, we often see that result with a single treatment. Wow. So what, 
take us through the process of the skin procedure and the microneedling. And by the way, for you women out there who are doing laser and microneedling, it's expensive and you have to continue doing it to for the maintenance. And, and be, you know what, Dr. Todd, before we go further, the reason I'm so excited about this is because literally I won't put Botox in my body. I don't care how many wrinkles I have. I won't do that. Um, I just, it's poison. It's foreign to my body with, with all the health stuff I've gone through. There's no way I would do that. I won't put in any fillers. I not knowing how my body's going to react and I don't want it to change the way I look and my face. So knowing all of that, will you tell everybody really quickly the downside of the typical fillers and Botox and why we're, why we're going in a different direction? Sure. Well, have you told your audience what Botox actually means? I have not, but go ahead. <laughs> Botox is short for botulinum toxin. Botulism is a serious and potentially fatal disease that paralyzes the muscles. So a Botox treatment is basically giving a dose of a toxin that paralyzes the muscles for typically three or four months and has to be repeated. And sometimes there can be adverse effects from that. So it can do a good job of basically paralyzing the forehead so the lines reduce, but it's literally at the expense of, say, having facial expression. <laughs> so in general, if you can avoid putting a toxin in your body, it's better if there are other ways. The microneedling is really good. Uh, it's been shown to produce collagen formation, basically causing micro trauma in the skin that will have the result of building collagen to repair that micro trauma and that will cause some tightening particularly in areas say around the jawline or sagging skin in the neck it can be very beneficial for that or generally tightening the skin of the face filler is very interesting if someone has deeper lines to reduce them then filler can create a better cosmetic result and if you like i will let you know the latest greatest in the world of filler <laughs> I would love to see it. <laughs> so the popular filler that's been used is hyaluronic acid. And what's good about hyaluronic acid is that it's actually a natural compound in our body. It has the property of holding water in the tissue. So it's good in the face to look hydrated and look young and rosy. It's also used in joints that when we put pressure on the joints and say, squeeze the water out of the cartilage, the hyaluronic acid will pull it back in. It helps keep the joints lubricated and spongy, which is a really good thing. When used as a filler, though, it is fundamentally not very biologically active compared to other fillers. And it will tend to persist, but will not be causing much of a regenerative stimulus. It's literally more like a mechanical filler without being a regenerative stimulant. Another challenge with hyaluronic acid is that it can tend to pool. You can actually get little blobs of hyaluronic acid that accumulate by gravity, and then people need to massage it around for quite a while so it doesn't look like they've got a lump on their face. The evolution that was a big step forward was using a natural filler that comes from a person's own blood and that's called platelet-rich fibrin and as you know fibrin is what the body uses to make a clot so if you cut yourself you stop bleeding well it's a process in the body that ultimately creates fibrin to wall off the area that's been injured so you stop bleeding using a person's own blood you can do a process where the fibrin is used to create literally a natural fibrin clot. And the fibrin does a significantly better job than the hyaluronic acid. It's natural, it's your own substance, it has growth factors that come with it, and that will create more collagen and a better cosmetic result. And we, 
we began using this for a while and we're getting better results than just with hyaluronic acid. And then a few months ago, we became aware of something else, which is even cooler. And we might even show a result that is among the most spectacular I've ever seen in terms of literally filling out lines that were so deep, it would take a lot of treatments to make a big difference. And this is called platelet-rich gel. And instead of using the blood to create a fibrin co collection that can be used as filler, it instead focuses on a molecule called albumin. And if you've gotten your blood reports, which you probably have many times, you note that one of the chemistries is often albumin. And the normal level is around four. And if people are protein malnourished, the albumin level drops. So it's when you can tell if someone has adequate general protein nutrition. What this method does, it uses a different type of device for the heating cycle that focuses on creating basically a gel out of albumin. It denatures the shape and creates a new kind of shape where you get a substance that is a natural filler. The reason that we've left PRF behind the platelet fiber and gone to platelet rich gel was a presentation that we attended by Dr. Peter Helton, who is one of the leading cosmetic dermatologists in the country, maybe the best one in the country, who told us about this work and he'd been using it uh, more than anyone, he was the first adopter. And the data that said, oh my God, this is so much better, is how much the platelet-rich fibrin reduces its volume in 24 hours, which was surprisingly, it was 77% less in 24 hours. So it might look great the day they leave the office, but all of a sudden the lines have basically become more apparent because the filler has basically contracted. In contrast, mm -hmm. the platelet-rich gel based on albumin only loses 4% of its volume in 24 hours. It loses almost no volume. And then they've actually done studies looking at how much collagen is generated using hyaluronic acid versus platelet-rich gel and it's actually four to five times the collagen formation as composed of hyaluronic acid. Whereas a typical vampire facelift might last a month, the platelet-rich gel lasts for three months, but if it's done a second time within a month, it lasts for 12 months. And we believe with our method, where we're combining it with active, very young stem cells from your own body, that those results will be even better. Well, it would only seem like they would, I mean, if you're putting this embryonic like stem cells in there, they're then taking what you've done and generating more. Mm -hmm. Am I not correct? That's right. You get more. The body is self-regenerating and making more of these substances that you want, even more cells to make the collagen. So just the stimulus of the platelet-rich gel, no matter how old the person's cells are, however good that is, we would expect a better result if we add someone's own stem cells to it, especially if they're very young stem cells. And of course, and if you're eating enough protein, proper wild animal protein, like I talk about everybody, and collagen and copper and the important supplements to make sure that your body has the the building blocks to continue the process you're only going to um, have better results so dr todd you want to show us some before and after pictures yeah i'm really excited about this this even impressed me so the above is before and what i'll say in this case i don't like talking about people's ages because i think if you really want to be a very youthful, very long-lived person, you have to get out of the mindset about the beliefs around what age means. I think we need to snap out of that. But what I'll say is her facial 
appearance was about 10 years older than her chronological age. And you see lots of vertical lines and fissures around the lips. You see this big vertical line in her chin. And immediately after, you see the line uh, in the middle of, of the space between her lips and the chin is almost completely filled in. The vertical lines are almost gone. The result, when I show you all the pictures, she probably looks now instead of 10 years older than her birthday, she looks 10 years younger. Hmm. So let's go on to the next slide, which and that before and after is is immediately after the procedure. This is same day, immediately after. Mm -hmm. And we expect that to get even better over time. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. This really blew me away. On the left side, you see the before, and you see that very deep nasolabial fold and some deeper lines around her eyes. And the nasolabial fold actually had kind of a roll of skin that was folding over it, which makes it harder to fill. If you look at the after, not only has that nasolabial fold line filled in so you can almost hardly see it in the upper half of it, that big fold of skin that was rolling, it's completely flattened out. It's almost like she had a surgical facelift and stretched the skin to get that kind of result. But it was literally just using filler made from her own blood. So no surgery at all, just literally injecting filler in a strategic and artistic way. And you see the lines under her eyes have nearly completely gone away too. And did she also do the microneedling procedure as well? Well, we also did microneedling. The platelet-rich gel, part of the procedure is that you make the gel from a person's blood, but then you mix it typically about 50-50, but you can adjust the ratio for the thickness of the gel. You mix it with the product from their blood where we activate the stem cells. So she got the natural gel plus the stem cells, plus all the growth factors that were in the preparation from blood. So she got the filler injection of the lines, microneedling, then topical application of her stem cell and growth factor application, and then the laser to allow the cells to integrate faster to become the desired skin components. What's crazy is that, you know, with microneedling, someone can look very red because it's it's obviously making you bleed. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much of that damage. I mean, if this is day one, she mm -hmm. still, she looks fantastic as if she could go outside and not be a problem. Mm -hmm. Is Am I seeing that correctly? Or is, is there something there where did you clean up all, obviously you clean up all the blood, <laughs> but, <laughs> but there, there's not that much redness. Yeah. I, at the end, I can show like a full facial, facial image, and you'll see that there is some redness, which is the result of the microneedling. But that, as you know, goes away in, in right. three to five days. Okay. Well, I, I mean, this is phenomenal um, results. I am, I'm blown away. Um, do you want to move on to hair? Um, well, I have another slide, actually. Okay. And this is the forehead. I mean, look at those deep furrowed wrinkles, uh, as well as the lines uh, in the bridge of the nose. And they're really well filled in. That's amazing. Has she done your, your um, original procedure as well? Or did she come in direct just for the facial? This this was her first cosmetic procedure. I think we did one systemic procedure for her before, which would have been good preparation for the cosmetic procedure. 
but that was all that she had had procedurally before this. That is un unbelievable. The deep forehead lines, those are very difficult for someone to get rid of. Right, and they could take Botox and lots of filler and lots of applications and microneedling and still not get a result like that. Yeah. She was so now are you ready for hair? Well, let me show the last photo to answer your question, which is more okay. of the full face before and after. Oh, there we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you see how beautifully those deep lines in her forehead have cleared. The lines around the eyes are much better. The nasal labial folds between the, the nose and the corner of the mouth is much better. And that deep line in her chin is gone. And there is some redness, which is a result of microneedling. Um, and as we say, that goes away pretty soon. So she's not quite ready for a social event, but it won't be long. The results are are fantastic. That is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. She was very happy. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> so for hair, the and this is just another view of that for hair. I hadn't anticipated showing those slides, but if our technician can go to slide 71, we can show a before and after there too. Okay, well, we'll as he's trying to figure that out, um, I take can describe. us through. Yeah. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. So that's the before. And <clears throat> the procedure, just like we numb the face, didn't really talk about that. There is a potent topical anesthetic cream, which is applied for 20 to 30 minutes before, which doesn't relieve all the discomfort, makes it a lot more comfortable. Uh, we do the same for the scalp. The scalp is even a bit more tender. If someone's really tender, we may even do a nerve block for the nerves that supply the scalp, which is a bit more extensive of a procedure for the, uh, the numbing part of it, but it makes it quite a lot more comfortable. So the procedure for the scalp, as I said, the stem cells in the skin reside in the hair follicles. So if someone's lost a lot of hair, and especially when there's almost no hair there, it's harder to regenerate. So we actually will inject the cells uh, into the scalp under the skin. And mechanically, it does require a lot of injections to cover a large area of scalp. So uh, it takes a while, but it's really little needles, which makes it more comfortable. The key is getting enough stem cells under the skin to have them migrate to generate the follicles. And this is a particularly good result. So that's the before, and next is six weeks after. Wow. So the one thing that um can you clarify on microneedling when someone goes to their facialist and gets microneedling the needles are not as long as what you're using is that correct <clears throat> the needles range typically from half of a millimeter to two millimeters and the size of the needle is a function of how aggressively you need to treat the area if you're microneedling the face just to build more collagen and tighten the skin and reduce fine lines and wrinkles, then you tend to use the smaller ones that are on the 0.5 millimeter or half a millimeter range. If you're looking at something more intense where you need to break up a lot of scar tissue, as in remodeling a scar to, to make it better, say a, a surgical scar in the abdomen, then you would tend to use the longer needles uh, more in the two millimeter range. Or if someone has acne scars that really needs uh, a lot of revision to fill it in and look good, then you'd use the, the deeper micro needling. So it's a function of the purpose. Okay. Um, that That is amazing with that result. So are you seeing with hair, because there's different reasons people lose their hair. It's either male pattern baldness, you know, too much testosterone. I always tell people that are, are men that are bald, it's because you're too manly. Um, uh -huh. Or it could be um, stress or hormones or lack of nutrients. 
are you seeing results regardless of the cause of the hair loss? <clears throat> you raise a very important point that in addition to whatever the primary approach would be, in this case, a stem cell and growth factor approach, it's always the complete stack. So what nutritional supplementation are they getting? If it's for the hair, is it the complete collection of nutrients that is good for the hair? Or is it some organic sulfur like MSM? Is it the different amino acids used to make hair proteins? Hair requires extra biotin, which people might not get necessarily. So there is the nutritional side of it. For men, you also have the challenge of testosterone conversion that you alluded to, which is the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. If you see shampoos to reduce DHT, that's what they're referring to. And a lot of things have been used for that. There are shampoos that are good for that. It's probably safer to take the shampoos. Uh, soy isoflavones have been used, for example, for that. Uh, that'll be another factor if it's male pattern baldness, then the testosterone has to be looked at, not just whether they have a high testosterone level, but if they have the predispositions to convert it to DHT. And then there's also peptide therapy. There's a particular peptide that's called GHK copper, which is very good for regenerating skin, helping the hair to grow and even to darken the hair. So there are protocols for use of that peptide. There have been laser protocols to stimulate the growth of hair, and that can be beneficial. And I'll mention one nutritional point that I probably haven't shared with you before. There was a group in South Africa that had a laser hair restoration company, and they would do red laser treatments of the scalp look like i love lucy hair dryers and they would do three treatments a week for six months and they combined it with the nutrition that we talked about for the hair as well as things to block dht and at six months they had some really good before and after results when they started using a formula of ours which is methuselah a nucleic acid formula and people don't often think of nucleic acids for hair. And what they observed was that in two months, they were getting the hair regeneration that would normally take six months. So we would add that to the protocol too. Let's talk about the supplements for a minute. The Methuselah Life, and you all can find that at sarabanthealth.com. I take it daily. Um, can you talk about the overall benefits of that supplement? Absolutely. So Methuselah is based on an animal study where they gave once a week injections of DNA and RNA to old rats. And the result was literally doubling and even tripling their lifespans. That was pretty amazing. So that caused me to look into the science of nutritional supplementation of nucleic acids. And there's a ton of literature. I actually written a little book that you could make available to your listeners as a free download called Growing Younger. And the first five chapters are all about that formula and the huge body of research. If animals are subjected to lethal doses of ionizing radiation, the survival increases from four to 5% to 50% by giving the nucleic acids. Uh, the liver regenerates faster if two thirds of it is removed. The intestines repair faster. Nucleic acids, when a person is under stress with aging, aren't made uh, in the body to the degree that will create optimum regeneration. Nutritional science has said they're not essential because we can make from simpler nutrients, but if someone isn't making enough, then there is, in a sense, a conditional deficiency. We did a placebo-controlled double-blind clinical study of middle-aged adults to see if we could improve their biometrics. Half the group got placebo and half the group got the active formula, taking six sprays under the tongue once a day. Everybody was told to walk 30 minutes a day. And after two months, the placebo group had no real change 
that the treated group gained 12 pounds of muscle, lost 15 pounds of weight, increased their aerobic capacity 16%, and their homocysteine level dropped in amount that would be like being about eight to 12 years younger. So there was a huge regenerative benefit from combining that formula with a very basic exercise program. That's amazing. Um, I think we're done with the slides. And mm -hmm. I, I've been taking Methuselah Life daily, in addition to, of course, getting the wonderful benefits from the stem cells. And my goal, Dr. Todd, is to see that the four gray hairs that I have are uh -huh. going to disappear and I'm never going to have to dye my hair. That is my goal. So I'm holding you to it. Um, okay. But the Methuselah Life is what I recommend using for for this procedure and it, it's the biohack right it's the stacking is the biohack as you say um the accelerated scalar copper this is something i actually was talking to dr daryl who is in your office mm -hmm. and the accelerated colloidal silver both of them to spray on the scalp and the face um, topically to help with any infection and also speed up the healing and to enhance the results. Copper, of course, is needed for the structure of the skin and um, hair. It's very important. Um, and then the silver, I will always go back to the, the day that I had a car accident. I hit my eye on the steering wheel, four level or layers of stitches, left the doctor's office with an antibiotic that I threw in the trash. And all I did was spray the silver on my eye, take my collagen. This is before I knew you and all of these amazing things that we can add in. And the healing process was um, amplified so, so much. And my, and I barely can see the scar anymore. So there's so many things that you can add in and, um, you know, making sure you're taking a collagen supplement, eating, eating the proper diet, the amount of protein that your body needs to build that collagen, build um, skin and hair and all of these things. And then of course, lower your stress level, right? Easier said than done, because none of us are under any stress these days. The world's <laughs> at peace, right? <laughs> so um, Dr. Todd, we've got a two minutes left. Is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with? And before you say that, everything that we've talked about and an introduction to Dr. Todd, you can actually find it on the website um, at sarabantahealth.com. We have a whole page for Dr. Todd. We've got his free book that you can download. And if you're interested in these procedures, either email me directly and I will give you my code, which is just Sarabanta, and it should also be in the description below to get um, a nice, nice big discount that Dr. Todd has given to all of our listeners. But is there anything else we are missing that you wanted to make sure that we leave our audience with? Well, I would just echo what you said and phrase it as less stress is best. <laughs> stress reduction makes everything work better from head to toe. And the other, without going into the details, is really, as you say, it's about the stack. And that was my phrase, the biohack is the stack. And it's an individual experiment. Every person needs to see of that universe of things they can do, what really works for them. And it's often wise to do add one thing at a time. And if it makes it better, keep it. And if it doesn't, keep working with other things to see what will give the very best results. I love it. Well, I always love talking to you. You're so much fun and so brilliant. I mean, very few doctors are actually fun and brilliant. So thank you, Dr. Todd. And thank you, everyone else, for joining us today. If I can help you with your health issues, you can contact me directly through the website, sarabantahealth.com. Happy put, to put together a protocol for you. And join the free group coaching on Telegram with the link below. There is no downside. I teach you on a daily basis with tips and tools to enhance your health. And you will be a part of a like-minded group to support you on your journey, not just to get rid of your chronic disease, but let's actually start reverse aging. 
thinking, right? You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products across over 100 channels under Accelerated Health TV and radio show. As I mentioned, my goal is to reach everyone on earth with eyes to see and ears to hear my message of healing. So help me with that goal. Share this podcast with a few of your friends who may need my help, who may be using Botox and fillers and might want an alternative. Thanks again for joining us here and have a great week.